Hi, this is Paul Andrew, and uh, this session is Office 365 Network Connectivity Architecture Testing Tools. I am a program manager in Office 365 at Microsoft, and I work on network performance and how admins can get the best connectivity to Office 365. I previously worked on Office 365 Commerce, Office 365 Data Center Expansion, on SharePoint, and uh, on the .NET Framework. The agenda for this talk is to start by discussing the enterprise connectivity challenge. What is that? And then what do we mean by the enterprise last mile of networking? And why this is a problem. We'll talk about uh, a number of different work items that we have that supports people working in this space. And then I'm going to do some demos of uh, two of the tools that we have. The first is the network connectivity page in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, which is in preview right now. And the second is connectivity.office.com, which is a, a testing tool that you can run standalone and watch the tests progress. And I have two demos of that, one from my uh, local machine and one from a location with some poor networking. So the Enterprise Connectivity Challenge is really talking about the uh, networking equipment that is between the user's machine and Microsoft's network. And if you compare it to a home user's networking, the home user's networking is what we refer to as simple and direct. It's simple in that it usually only has one or two pieces of networking equipment, maybe a router, maybe a Wi-Fi access point between the user and the ISP. And it is direct in that it connects directly onto the network at the user's location. So the ISP has some sort of connectivity pretty much into your house and you're, uh, you're connecting from that location directly onto the internet. The simplicity means that you don't have a lot of latency or other items which are causing delay on the network traffic and the directness means you don't have additional cable which also introduces delay onto that connectivity. If we compare that to an enterprise customer where this last mile represents the, the mile or so of networking between the ISP and the user, then uh, an enterprise customer is going to have the same network perimeter. They're going to have some networking equipment there. They're going to have commercial grade versions of those networking equipment, so they cost more money. And they need to be bigger to support scalability of a large number of users at their office. So here's an office with some networking equipment in amongst this last mile. When an enterprise has a second location, it's very common for them to run the networking back to their initial location, their head office, from that branch office. And this just creates a longer network connection between the user and Microsoft's network. It's also, in this day and age, common for enterprises to be very concerned about network security, particularly about users receiving emails with links in them and those users clicking on those links or users typing in previously unknown URLs into their web browsers. So we add some additional security devices onto that network perimeter so that we can watch out for those issues. And then if an enterprise has remote users who are maybe traveling, they are gonna to want to use a virtual private network to route the network connectivity from those users back into the on-premises network so that they can take advantage of that networking security stack that they've built out. And this means that they're evaluating all of the connectivity between their user machines and the internet uh, using the single network connectivity stack. So this is the classic set up for a network perimeter for enterprise and it represents the enterprise connectivity challenge that there's all this stuff which is uh, slowing down the connectivity. I'm speaking specifically for Office 365 and there's all this extra networking cable which is also slowing down the connectivity and causing end users to have poor experiences with Office 365. So what can we do about that? We need to think about why we care about this. We're really trying to optimize performance of Office 365 for our end users. And we also want to provide a secure network environment for those end users. And so the balance of how you do that is very important. Microsoft has an enormous number of security initiatives inside of our network and on our applications and services. We also spend a lot of effort in uh, optimizing performance of our network. All of this is in what we call the first mile or the networking inside Microsoft's control, where Microsoft has the most ability to influence. 
The networking outside of Microsoft's influence is the customers on premises networking and the internet service providers network. And we're concerned about these three elements of that. One, the backhauling distance from the user to the network perimeter. Two, the network processing overhead at that network perimeter. And three, the ISP optimality of peering and routing policies that they have before getting onto Microsoft's network. So those are the three areas that uh, we want to think about optimizing. And we want to provide ways of testing that and helping you understand the impact of each of those. So we have developed these network connectivity principles, which help to think about uh, this challenge of enterprise network connectivity. The first is we want you to be able to identify network traffic that's going to Office 365 versus network traffic that is maybe going to a URL that a user clicked on in an email or typed in in a web browser. For those types of network destinations, you absolutely want to have additional security for connectivity to Office 365, uh, we don't think this is the same case because Office 365 is a service which you've signed up for. Uh, you've presumably done due diligence and evaluated these network destinations prior to your users connecting to them. And you've looked at Microsoft's security mechanisms on those endpoints. And so doubling up on those uh, that security for Office 365 should not be necessary. So the first thing is we want to identify uh, those Office 365 endpoints. And we publish those at aka.ms forward slash 0365 IP. The second principle that we have is enabling local egress. We want the branch user's network connectivity to Office 365 to look more like a home user on their consumer internet and less like a branch office that only has network connectivity back to the head office. We just want to remove that distance in backhauling the network traffic from the branch office to the head office before it has a chance to get out onto a network that peers with Microsoft's network. So local egress is uh, the second principle and you need to match DNS resolution uh, with that same network egress so that we can use that as a hint to identify the correct service front door for our services. The third one, enable direct connectivity, is about avoiding hairpins that may be required to go to intermediary cloud service providers. Cloud service providers often set up as a proxy server and proxy network traffic from a user to Office 365, and this causes extra network latency and uh, violates the principle of direct and simple connectivity. And the fourth one is modernizing security for SaaS. Once you're identifying Office 365 traffic separately to other network traffic, you want to think about a zero trust model for your network connectivity, where you don't trust the device and you don't trust the network traffic just because it's inside your network perimeter. So that network perimeter becomes no longer the place where you can put network security devices. You want to do network security at the endpoint, at the device itself. And you can also do network security in Office 365, the other endpoint. So for a trusted service like Office 365, adding perimeter network security doesn't really add you any value. You want to, uh, you want to define that security in terms of those endpoints that you're working on instead as a zero trust model. Okay, so we talk about identifying Office 365 network traffic. Let's take a look at what we provide for doing that. We publish all of the IP addresses and uh, FQDNs or fully qualified domain names that you need to connect to Office 365. And there are updates to those because of course, uh, there are regularly expansions into the Office 365 service and new features requiring new network endpoints. We publish those approximately once a month and we provide 30 days of notice before new services live on those new endpoints. And we have a REST API, uh, which you can connect to, to get those. And you can access those directly from your proxy servers or your firewalls to, pr to facilitate uh, auto configuration. We group these into three categories, optimize, allow, and default. And we define uh, specific network endpoints in terms of these three categories. The first category, Optimize, is the most critical endpoints as part of Office 365. These really are most important that they have the least network intermediary devices and that their connectivity really is very simple and direct. 
They also uh, represent the highest volume of Office 365 traffic. So you're going to be bypassing your expensive security devices for a large amount, over 80% of Office 365 traffic. They are also expected to have a low rate of change. So you can do things like uh, put these in a split tunnel configuration for a VPN so that they're split out from the VPN backhaul and go directly out onto the internet and you won't have to change that configuration very often longer than the 30 days that we normally provide. So these are the most important endpoints. There's a very small number of them, less than 10 FQDNs it says here and uh, the IP addresses which are behind those. On the other end of the spectrum, the default category of endpoints, it's not necessary to take any special treatment for these endpoints. They can be directed to your default internet egress location or proxy servers or routed through backhaul, whatever you might send uh, a URL that a user types freshly into a web browser, you can uh, send these endpoints there. They do represent a small amount of the overall network traffic that offers 365 users and so it's not very impactful many of them are required you have required connectivity but that doesn't mean to say that you have to take any special action to uh, to treat them make sure that they have optimal connectivity this blue set allow in the middle uh, are really that they're in the middle so you can increase the performance of your office for your office 365 users if you treat these allow endpoints the same as the optimized ones you provide an optimal connectivity for them. However, if you have a higher security bar and you are very concerned about additional network endpoints, you can treat these allow ones like the default ones. You won't have quite as good user experience with Office 365, but you have a much easier job where the work that you have in network security is proportional to the number of endpoints you have to review, the number of companies you're working with, the number of IP addresses, the number of changes, by moving the allow endpoints into default, you greatly reduce that number of endpoints that you have to be concerned about. It's just this optimized category that we need to have simple and direct connectivity for. So we have these categories and we publish these on the web service that you can pull through. And the key point here is really just to focus on this optimized set. If there's no other time and effort you have available for working on this problem, make sure that you, uh, you work on this optimized set of network endpoints. So we've talked about network connectivity principles. We talked about the uh, Office 365 endpoint API, which provides these IP addresses and fully qualified domain names. We also have a network partner program, which we invite network device vendors, such as firewalls, proxy servers, and other network security vendors to participate in, and these partners use our web service to identify Office 365 traffic, and they follow the network connectivity principles. They usually have a one-click connect to Office 365 that uh, follows the Office 365 network connectivity principles and allows you to set up a bypass of processing for those optimized network endpoints. And so you can find more information about that on our website, but we have a lot of network partners uh, device partners who use these APIs. Um, now we get to the two tools that I want to talk about today. The uh, one of which is the networking network onboarding tool, which is a standalone tool that we'll take a look at. But the first one we'll take a look at is the network connectivity page inside the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And so we're going to take a look at uh, this, which provides an organization centralized view of connectivity to Office 365 across all of your office locations. It can provide a network assessment for each office location and it will identify network insights or things that you probably want to look into for each of those locations. And we can provide specific recommendations for Office 365 network administrators to take a look at. Okay, so let's get into the demo. And the first one here is uh, going to be the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So here is the page inside Health. We see the connectivity page, which is what we're looking at here. And you can see it shows a map. The map view shows all of the office locations that uh, have been detected from the network measurements, which are running passively inside of Office 365 client applications. 
often the first thing you want to take a look at in here is uh, some of these locations are red and dark red. Um, let's take a look at one of these dark red locations. This is the Philadelphia office, which has an assessment there it shows of 18. This is 18 out of 100, or 56 points out of a total of 300. And what we're looking at here is the network perimeter for this Philadelphia location. This is the location where the user is in Philadelphia. And then all around this, you can see optimal front doors for Exchange, which are the yellow flags, and for SharePoint, which are the blue clouds. And uh, you can see we're actually connecting across the country to the Pacific Northwest where we have our network perimeter for this user. So this user has some backhaul from a remote office to a central office. And then because of that egress, they're connecting to an exchange server here in the Pacific Northwest and also a SharePoint server here, both with X's on indicating that they're not optimal for this user. Over here on the location assessment panel, you can see these points are broken down by the different workloads. The Exchange Online score has a latency of 312 millisecond that's defining that. SharePoint Online has uh, 4 megabytes per second of download speed or about 40 megabits per second. And then Teams has these three UDP measurements, latency and jitter and packet loss, which all are looking pretty bad in this demo environment that I'm showing here. You can look at the history of these data points as it's been uh, going up and down over the last little while. And you can scroll down and take a look at uh, the network insights that we have for this location. You can see we've called out this backhauled network egress as uh, a network insight and also some other network insights that we found there too. If I click on the backhauled network egress, uh, we can take a look at the details for that and we can get more information at a documentation page here that we can read and we can see the data that was used to identify this network backhaul. Okay, if I go to the details page here, this shows me the details for this uh, office location and the measurements that were taken. It's also showing me that we have uh, uh, a 83% of customers near me have better network performance compared to me in this city. Uh, so that's quite a lot. I guess most of the customers in Philadelphia do not uh, have this backhauled network egress that we have. Some more details here, uh, and you've got some details for SharePoint Online that you can take a look at as well. If you switch on to the History tab here, um, we can show a chart showing uh, previous data, and you can go back. We store this data for up to two years for you. Uh, and you can go and look at uh, different data. Maybe you want to look at the exchange latency over that time. You can see how that's been going. Uh, or maybe you want to look at the uh, SharePoint download speed specifically, uh, and you can chart each of those and print them out. Uh, we also show the network insights that have started or stopped during this period. And we'll show them on the chart where you can see why a change in the measured network performance is impacted, possibly because of a network insight. Uh, last thing I'll talk about here is you can see 16% of the samples for this organization are from Philadelphia. So it's a pretty big office location. What is that? About a sixth of the company is coming from there. Okay, so if we go back to the summary page with all our office locations, you can see here the assessment for the enterprise, which is a weighted average across all of the office locations, so that 56 there. Also weighted average, we have the Exchange Online assessment, the SharePoint assessment, and the Teams assessment. And then as I scroll down, I, I still see my network insights, but here they are shown as a summary for the organization. And uh, you can see here, uh, I've got this uh, backhauled network egress. If I click on that, it switches to the next tab for insights and filters on my backhauled network egress. You can see it's identified that for four of these locations. I can change the filter and choose other options. I'll just clear that out. And now you can see all of the network insights that we have across the organization. Uh, I can also look at a table of locations. And uh, in this case, I might want to sort the locations by the biggest office location that we have. So there's uh, Olympia is the largest one. Philadelphia is the third, the one we were looking at before. And it shows you the details for the insights that were found uh, and also comes up with a potential improvement. This is looking at what other customers are getting for their TCP latency to exchange online and subtracting that from the latency we're seeing for this customer. So 280 milliseconds potential from the best connected customers in Philadelphia. 
here I can go back and look at the history again and uh, when I'm looking at the history across the whole customer I can drill into a specific location uh, maybe I want to see this one in Texas and uh, maybe I want to go and look at that uh, SharePoint data point in Texas as well so you can set all those things up for the reports that you want to capture uh, and take a look at those all right so let's come uh, back out of here and let's take a look at the next demo I have which is running connectivity.office.com so here's the website this is different from what we saw in the admin center in that this is running the test locally. I'm going to go ahead and run the test and I can type in the location where I want where I am where I'm running the test so I don't have to rely on my web browser detecting my location. Um, and uh, you can come and see that for this location I've got some test results immediately. Here's the user in Washington State and I'm connecting to this exchange front door here. Here's my network egress, the star. Similar to what we saw with the network perimeter in the admin center but this time it's just for my location here uh, where I'm running the tests. In the admin center we're showing you aggregations of tests run across all of your client machines uh, and showing those for all office locations that are detected. Uh, here I can run some advanced tests as well uh, in this client that is downloaded and you can see that started running um, and it's capturing some additional information. I can come and see this in the details pane here. I switch over from my results and impact where it's showing me a comparison to other people in the same location, other customers and go in and say, hey, I want to see the details. Let me see those results. So let's take a look. It's, ident it's got my location as entered by the user. The network egress from my ISP is also in Redmond. Distance is zero miles. We're rounding here one kilometer. Um, it measures the time to uh, access my DNS server. So there's 16, 17 milliseconds for those. And it's measuring my uh, distance to the DNS recursive resolver, which is the uh, specific DNS server that's actually looking up the Exchange Online front door. The reason we do this is uh, that server is used to help identify where the client is located and it looks like I'm a little bit away from where that DNS server is. That's not just the forwarding DNS server which these ones are that I'm using, that's actually the DNS server which is querying the global DNS system. Uh, and that one we use as part of identifying uh, the exchange front door that you should connect to. Uh, you can see that there's no proxy server identified from my location. There is a VPN. Uh, I have this VPN um, and it's evaluating the VPN for split tunnel policies. This means I'm splitting out Office 365 network endpoints in that optimized category to uh, my local ISP rather than force tunneling the traffic over the VPN. And you can see that we're doing that correctly here. If you scroll down here, there's more information. You can see the service front door connected to, in spite of that DNS recursive resolver being a little way away, this is still a really close service front door to me. And uh, it says that the best service front doors for my location are in these three locations, one of which is the one I'm connecting to here. And then there's not a significant number of other customers have better network connectivity, so we get a green, we get a green tick there also. And we get some DNS debug information from our service front door, which may be helpful. And then we do the same thing for SharePoint. You can see I'm connecting to the same location for SharePoint. Uh, it measures my download speed to the SharePoint front door, which is 6.9 megabytes per second, or about 69 megabits per second. The reason we quote this in megabytes per second is if I had a file which was 6.9 megabytes, it would take me about a second to access that on OneDrive for Business. And so that gives you a real direct interpretation of what that means. We also measure buffer bloat. And buffer bloat is where you measure the latency during the download uh, where you're saturating the circuit. And you want to see how much that latency increases during the download. So in my case, it's increasing by 8 milliseconds. This is not very much. Uh, this is often occurs with consumer home routers, which have large buffers and can buffer up data uh, for a period of time. Some more DNS debug information. And then we're looking at Teams UDP media quality. All good numbers here from the packet loss, latency, and jitter there. 
Uh, in addition, we can look at the trace route, the network path, and if there's any required network endpoints for Office 365 that are blocked from this location, they'll be called out here under connectivity. Okay, let's switch over again and take a look at uh, another location. This is a virtual machine I'm connecting to, which is in Singapore, and it has a proxy server configured on it. And the proxy server is actually in the Netherlands, so quite a long way between the user location Singapore and the proxy server. So we're running our test. It's taking a little bit longer here, um, and I'm going to get right in and run those advanced tests as fast as I can. All right, so let's come in and take a look at some of what's going on here. Here's our advanced test client, which is starting up, and will actually take a couple of minutes to finish those at this location. But let's go and have a look. Here's our map of our network perimeter. As you can see, there's the user in Singapore. There's some nearby uh, optimal service front doors, which are identified. And here's the network egress in uh, Amsterdam. You can see it's a long way away and it's connected to a front door which we've identified as non optimal. Uh, you also see that we have average performance called out with 9% uh, of Office 365 customers in Singapore. A lot of people have better performance than us uh, in Singapore. Let's go over and take a look at the details and I'll just see how long um, we're taking 423 or 428. We're getting closer. You can see my location was identified by the web browser using Windows Location Services. Here's my network egress. The distance is over 10,000 kilometers, um, but I do have pretty close DNS connectivity, uh, being as I'm running this in a, a Microsoft data center on Azure. Uh, it is identifying my proxy server. There it is. I've got no VPN. And then here's my measurements of exchange connectivity. It's pretty slow. Uh, and lots of people have better connectivity in my area. The SharePoint connectivity is not working right now from this location. We do have a bug in the test tool that we'll work on for that. And here's the Teams media quality. Now, because I have an HTTP proxy server, it's not able to proxy UDP media. And so that's all going straight out at my user location in Singapore. So you can see it's got really good connectivity, no packet loss, just three milliseconds of latency, 23 milliseconds of jitter there from uh, my machine. All right, let's take one last look at our tests. They're still going, there's two left to go. Uh, so it looks like these two left to go are not connectivity, that's all passed, but I think our trace routes are still running on the back end here. So um, we won't wait for those. The trace routes actually uh, don't work from uh, an Azure data center because ICMP is blocked. So we don't see very much uh, interesting information uh, until uh, right at the end when it connects to the, the host. All right, I'm going to switch back to my slides here. All right, so my resources here, you can access that network connectivity test tool for a one-off test at connectivity.office.com. Uh, if you want to get this testing from our passive network measurements, you can take a, you can read more information about it at aka.ms forward slash netignite, and you can sign up for the preview program. The connectivity principles URL is there. The IP addresses and URLs for Office 365 is there. If you want to just chat about Office 365 networking or comment on any of these tools, I'd recommend using the uh, uh, tech community. A link to our forum is aka.ms forward slash net forum. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I look forward to hearing from you. And uh, I hope you get good value out of the tools that I've shown here today. Thank you for being a part of the Galactic Collaboration Summit. Join the community and meet in-person world-class Microsoft and MVP speakers this autumn in Wiesbaden, Frankfurt, Germany, with 15 full-day tutorials and over 150 Microsoft 365 and Azure sessions at the combined European Collaboration Summit and European Cloud Summit from 26 to 28 October 2020. Community rocks.